Welcome back to the Snyde Museum of Art. My name is Joe Becker, and I'm honored to serve as the director of your art museum. It's May, it's the month of Mary, and I'm delighted to be able to share with you some of the highlights from our permanent collection that celebrate Mary. Images of the Mother of Christ play a very prominent role in the history of art. There are dozens of representations in our permanent collection. And, as you can imagine, they are exceedingly important here on the campus of the University of Notre Dame. So often when we see images of the Virgin, we're thinking about Christmas. But the truth is, images of Mary are much more than just about the Christmas season. I, too, look forward to cards coming in the mail, the new Christmas stamp becoming available, and even the new calendars being available to hang in the new year. But images of Mary play a very important role in the lives of many individuals, now and in the past. Here in the 19th century galleries, I thought I'd share with you a very grand painting and a very intimate sculpture. This very grand painting depicts the adoration of the Magi, and it's by the artist Edward Steinbrook. It's a very archetypical scene that we would go back to the idea of Christmas, think about during the holiday season. Mary and the Christ child are featured at center. Over at our right hand side are the Magi and members of their retinue. At our left hand side stands Joseph, and then further to the left, a grouping of shepherds of various ages. Up above, three angels, three heavenly hosts, preside. In the 19th century, there was a great revival in terms of religious, specifically Catholic imagery, and Steinbrück was a great example of that movement. In this scene, he offers us something very interesting, a nighttime view. In the absence of a starry night or a moonlit sky, it's the Christ child that radiates. He glows from within the center of the painting. And who does he illuminate most clearly? Mary. There is little doubt that Mary is the most frequently represented female figure in the history of art. More than any earthly regents, more than any sparkling celebrities, her likeness has been a staple for painters, sculptors, printmakers, draftsmen, and designers for many centuries. This particular image, although it's called the Adoration of the Magi, it really combines a whole series of moments from the early life of Christ, important also for the life of Mary. Yes, the Magi are featured over at the right-hand side, but so too are the shepherds. The individuality of the faces, the details of their clothing, and their gestures are remarkable. There is much activity. People move into the center of the scene, Hands are extended, bodies twist, gestures animate. But there is an island of calm. It's Mary at the center. She gazes, she presents, she offers. And even though there is this small, innocent child laid out before her that she's making available to all those that want to come and adore, there's a very striking sign, one of sacrifice. Yes, it's the lamb at the left-hand side. In this image, the whole of the Christmas story seems to before our very eyes. It's warm, 
it's intimate. The evening feeling is most clear. We're being made aware, we're sharing in something very special. Let me take a moment and walk back over and share with you something also very special, an image of Mary and the Christ child alone by Gustave Duray. Whereas the Steinbrook painting is very large, it's very grand, it seems very formal for a great audience. The Duray sculpture of Mary and the Christ child is much more intimate. We see Mary standing, holding a squirmy child. For those of us that are parents or that have held 18 month olds, you realize that energy, that enthusiasm. Yet, if you look into that face, it's loving, it's kind. But as the child squirms, something very interesting is captured by the artist. Look at the body, look at the limbs. They're extended outward in a way that suggests the crucifixion and death that this child will one day endure. Just as in the painting, there was a forecast of things to come, the sorrows that Mary would bear, so too in this sculpture, we see something of motherhood, but we see something of motherhood that reflects on things to come. One of the most rewarding things about seeing a work of sculpture is that it changes, whether you're standing in the front, or you're standing over at the side, or when we're moving it around, you have the opportunity to see it from the back. It's an object in place. It's an object in a space. It's an object that has viewpoints that are meaningful from a variety of points of view. I am particularly drawn to this image in the way that you start out with the head of Mary, goes down through her nose, into the face of Christ, the way that it twists and turns and moves around her torso, the limbs come down, and then the folds of the dress swirl ever so gently around and around and around. Dore has done a very good job creating a very complete visual experience, helping us to understand truly the title of sculpture in the round. Two very important images here in the 19th century gallery that celebrate the life of Mary and the life of the infant Christ. 